Right, jumping back to these these invoice videos. So continuing on from where I left off, if you have a look at this particular line here, it says four month. Now what that is basically used for is, such as in the example of this guy, he might be perform he might have performed four lawn cuts for a commercial property over the previous month. So he can actually give them an invoice the following month and says, what well, you've got issue an invoice, it's due in 14 days, and that was for the month of July. That was for all the cuts I did for you in July. You've got to pay me that in August. So that's what that's for. It's what month did I do that work in. Again, you don't have to use that. If that's irrelevant to your business, to what you, you're, you're, you're performing for your work, you don't use that column. You just ignore that. That will not be printed on any invoice. If you leave that blank, that does not appear. And I'll show you that later. Okay. If you leave nothing in this, if you don't use anything in this box here, it will not affect your invoices. It will not appear on the invoice. And I'll actually prove that to you right now. Actually, if I print preview, I'm going to preview this invoice. You will notice here we have a payment due. But we don't have a four month. Now, if I just quickly select something here, just for the sake of doing it to show you, if I print preview that, now it comes up. We have a four month. See that? So if you don't have anything in this in these boxes, it's not going to appear on the invoice. Right. Remit and slip. What is a remit and slip? Remit and slips are generally put down the bottom of invoices. It allows customers to peel off the bottom of the invoice and remit that with the money when they pay it to you. And if you use remittance slips, you might want them to do that because it makes your life easier to sort out exactly where the money is coming from, particularly if you're um, a business that deals with a lot of different clients on a lot of different bases, such as this handyman guy. I mean, he could be doing six different jobs a day for six different people and six different real estates. So I can put in and go, yes, I want, my, I want this invoice to include a remittance slip. So I just click that. That's all I have to do. So when you print out this invoice, if I just print preview this, you will notice that it comes up with a remittance slip on the bottom. Right, it provides the information of the invoice. This is for invoice 1008. That's the name of the customer. This is basically for my information, so it's easy for me to me to find when I get the invoice or when I get the receive the payment. And the customer can write here exactly how much they're paying. So they send the check, write here how much they're paying. You can then go ahead and pay it against this invoice. And obviously, if they've paid the full amount, then you can close the invoice off. If they haven't paid the full amount, then you know that they owe money. Well, that's basically what that's for. Right. That's this whole area up here virtually discussed. There's not much more that really needs to be discussed about it. It's all pretty logical information. Right. Let's just quickly now discuss some things about this printing. Before I actually get to that, though, I just want to let you look at this icon here. See, it's got two. It's a copy icon. So it says here, when I hold it there, see the written underneath there? It says, create a copy of this invoice. So if you've provided an invoice to a customer, and let's say that every month the invoice is the same, particularly you know, if it's a particular customer that you're doing repetitive work for, and it's always the same invoice, and all you're doing is changing dates or changing amount, quantities, well, then you can create a copy of this invoice. To save you a lot of time, you click copy I might just do that right now if I click copy you'll see that the last invoice number now is 1008 if I click copy this invoice create a copy yes it jumps away it's going to create a copy of this invoice and once it finishes that it's going to pop up on the screen it's going to tell me that some editing is going to be required I click OK I click finish so if I look at this screen you notice that here is the invoice here, copy of invoice. It pretty easily stands out because it says copy of invoice and it's the last invoice in the series. And it doesn't have a total here. It wants you to jump in the invoice and edit it because obviously you've got to edit who, who it's for because even though it might be the same client, the system doesn't know that it's the same client each time. We don't know. You've just created a copy of invoice and it could be for a different client but it's the same information. So you have to select... You have to select the client. So if I click edit to select, edit the invoice, all I need to do now is select the client. If I've previously added him in here, I don't know if I've added that guy. I actually didn't add Mr. Smith here before because I thought he was going to be a one-off client. So, you know, I can click. I can add a client. So let's just pick someone for the sake of adding someone here. 
So now I've added a, added the client, and the actual information is a, identical to the previous invoice. So if it, it's a, it's an identical information, it saves you a lot of time. One thing you'll notice is, see this invoice number changed? It's not in the series. That's because I have actually gone in and changed that deliberately. Well, I wanted to show you something. If I jump back up the top here, and I jump into setup, and I change my business details, and I edit here. So if we go into the editing area, and this is discussed in um, one of the first videos, how to jump in and edit your business details. I change this to say that I want my invoice numbers to start from invoice 5001. So at any time during the year, you could actually change that and say, you know, I now want my invoice numbers to start from a different number. Why you would do that, I don't know. But at the beginning of a year, yes, you might start your invoice numbers from, instead of starting with invoice number one, because you don't want your first client to see that, oh, I'm your first client for the year. It's midway through the first month and you haven't issued an invoice yet. You might want a client to feel that you're very busy and, and, and you're very successful. So I'm going to start my invoices at whatever number you want to pluck out of your head. And for some times, it gives them no idea what how many, much work you've done because if you start at invoice number 500, they have no idea how much work you have done or haven't done. So for this guy here, I changed my invoice numbers to 5,000 just to prove to you that the moment you change this number, the next invoice after that will be according to this. It won't be 5,000. It actually starts from the next number onwards. So it's going to be 5,001. So that's what I had actually done here. So when I created my next invoice, it turned out to be 5,001. Now, it never allows you to, to, to select an invoice lower. So if, you, if I had to change that to number 500, the system would have found that there was an invoice number higher than that, and it would have continued on from the highest number. It would, would have ignored the 500. Okay, it won't allow you to go less. You can allow you to go more, but not less. That information is identical as I previously selected. Obviously, this information here won't be. You have to edit that. But it just creates the basics of an invoice. If I had about information in these boxes, it would have also copied that over for me. I'm almost running out of time on this particular video, but I'm going to discuss this particular thing here before I discuss this. So we've got an icon here that says Change Current Printer. If you have more than one printer connected to your computer, you can change the printer that it's going to be printed to. In this case here, I have a couple of printers. I have a couple of PDF printers and so forth. And I can select, by default, this is my default. By default, it prints to the Do PDF printer program. So instead of printing to my invoice, to my printer, whenever I click any of these buttons, it's going to print it to a PDF. But if I wanted to print it to my printer, I'd have to change this now and say I want it printed to my brother printer. Close this, then when I print, it will print this invoice to my brother printer. And it changes the default setting, so I'd have to come back then later and change the default setting back to do PDF because that's my normal default setting. So it offers you a quick way of changing this rather than going start, going to your printer settings in your windows and changing it there. Ah, nice and quick. Click here, change it here. Right, I'm going to exit this invoice, this video, and jump to the next, jump to a new one.